And nothing beats a trail to travel farther every day I'd rather have lake and trees and rock than a hideaway in a southern box Hi, Dave Hatfield here, and my friends and I have just walked across a gorgeous northern lake somewhere northwest of Sudbury, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And my friend Sean has just unpacked his GoPro. We've selected a site for the wall tent, and Sean is going to arrange a time lapse as we set it all up. This is not a park or a conservation area. This is Crown Land. We've never been here before, but that's the joy of it all. <laughs> It's not a prepared site. There's no sign of human presence. As we walked into this inlet, we saw a south-facing exposure. And in that hillside up behind, there's an enormous quantity of dead, dry, leaning, standing spruce poles just begging to be sawn up for firewood for our little wood stove. So let's get started. And we'll look like Keystone cops here moving at about four times normal speed. We've cut one pole out of the bush, dead, but a good strong one, and I'm lashing it to a tree about six feet up. A full wall tent setup is seven poles, and that's something we never do because it's too much work and it cuts down too many trees. We've chosen this spot because we can bridge a gap between two trees and get away with just one pole. So Sean has just brought the tent bag over while I take my sharp trail axe and cut off all the little nubbies that are on top of the pole. The wall tent will be tied underneath the ridge pole, but the fly sheet will be thrown over top, so we don't want any holes put in it. By the way, two years later we came back to this spot and reused that same ridge pole. As we unfold the tent and tie it under the pole, there are lashings about every 18 inches, you can see we're on snowshoes. We are camping on top of the snow. We're not going to be digging away to the ground. This allows us to camp just about anywhere and makes the whole thing a lot simpler. There could be logs and rocks down there, but we won't know and don't care. It also eliminates the need for any ground stakes. Not that there's any topsoil here anyway. Instead, we'll be tying the sides out to trees and shrubs, which is why we'd rather camp in the bush than in the open. Quicker, easier, simpler, and more shelter from the wind. As we unwrap the fly sheet and untangle all the lines, it's really nice to be doing this in such a sunny, gorgeous day. We pick this spot early, so there's lots of time. The sun is warm because it's early March, and it's not blowing a blizzard. By the way, this was an eight-day traveling trip. We're not just setting up in one spot. We always use a fly sheet with these tents. The advantage comes when it snows. The material of the fly sheet is always above the hot wall tent, so it always stays cold, it never touches, and the snow just slides off. Without the fly sheet, the snow melts at the peak of the tent, but somewhere lower down on the sides it'll stick and then has to be beaten off from the inside. This is a bit awkward if you want to go away for a day hike. Also, if any sparks from the chimney blow back and put holes in the roof, it's a lot easier to replace the fly sheet than repair the tent. And it's a safety advantage, too. We load the tent onto one sled, but the fly sheet on a different one. That way, if one went through the ice, we'd still have the makings of some kind of shelter. So, I just hopped up on the grub box wearing snowshoes. I needed to get a little higher so that the ridge pole would be level. The lid of that grub box is only quarter inch plywood, but by spreading out the load, it's okay. I bring two sets of snowshoes into the bush. Those bear paws, you can see, and a set of Ojibwe pattern pointy-ended snowshoes. They're great for breaking trail. The bear paws are perfect for camp work. If we didn't have snowshoes on, we'd be post-holing with each step, probably about 18 inches. There goes the grub box into the tent. This is the easy time to do that. In a few minutes, we'll be pulling out the sod cloth, which is the 18-inch wide hem of plastic tarp material attached to the bottom of each wall of the tent. 
We'll fold it outwards, heap snow on it, and therefore get a perfect seal against any wind or drafts. If you fold the sod cloth inward, it can end up hard frozen, bonded right into the hard packed snow underneath where you sleep, and that makes it difficult to remove when you want to break camp. I should also mention that we're wearing snowshoes now, but later when the snow is packed and sinters, we'll be able to get around just on our boots. So Pete's just walking up the hill. He's looking for a pole that we can use as a barrier log inside the tent. This separates the front part, the working area of the tent, from the raised sleeping area in the back. It also serves as a support for the two poles that we're going to wire the stove onto. The barrier pole is not essential if it's just an overnight stop, but uh, we're going to be here for a couple of days and it helps keep things separate and stops the edge of the sleeping area snow from crumbling down. Sean is at the back of the tent heaping snow on the sod cloth and it looks like Pete has got us a log. I bring over the wood stove and the chimney's inside there too. And it's all coming together. I'm ready to go inside and assemble the stove, so I take my snowshoes off, because at this point, when I go in there, I actually want to post hole, because that's the first step in digging out the working area. The general tent layout is illustrated here from a later clip. That's the sleeping area, raised up by the snow from the working area. The grub box on the right, and the cook stove on the other side. By the way, with that cook ring and putting the pot directly into the firebox, we can boil a liter of water, which comes from that aluminum pail, as fast as we can at home. Anyway, Pete slides me the pole underneath the sod cloth so I can get it into place. And unfortunately, at that point, uh, the video camera stopped or ran out of batteries or something. So all we have is a later shot of the stove set up with the smoke coming out the pipe. Of course, a tent set up like this is not instant. This whole thing took about an hour and a half for three guys on a good site. But we've got a heated house that we were able to move around easily. And a bit of work in the bush, you know, it's not a bad thing. We end up with a wonderful, practical, supportive, low-stress home. A truly excellent base of operations for the next couple of days. And nothing to do except enjoy ourselves in Canada's crown land. And nothing beats a trail to travel farther every day I'd rather have lake and trees and rock than a hideaway in a southern box